live from Stanford University, it's theCUBE, covering the Women in Data Science Conference 2017. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at Stanford at the second annual Women in Data Science Conference. I'm Lisa Martin, joined by one of today's speakers from the event, Stephanie Gottlieb. Stephanie, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. You had a very interesting uh, talk, which we'll get to in a minute, but you are currently the president of Agilio Sports. So we want to talk about that as well. Yeah. Um, you've been in the software and technology industry, oil and gas, for a very long time. You've got a oh, bachelor's, master's, PhD, you can just a few very... years. Okay, thank you. Just you're, You've got expertise that <laughs> many people would desire. Um, so we'd love to understand what your talk was about today with respect to oil and gas data, digital transformation in, in oil and gas. Um, you said data is the new oil, which I just love that. Talk to us about that. What does that mean with respect to digital business transformation and that industry? Yeah, so first of all, I think data science is definitely an area uh, in which uh, women, which is I think the main, one of the main topics of today, uh, will have a huge opportunity to uh, move the needle. It's, uh, I mean, when you look at the, some numbers, uh, in I started my talk with this example, uh, in France, what is the uh, proportion of women entrepreneurs involved in uh, technology uh, startups? And the answer is uh, in the range of 8 to 12 percent. Wow. I mean, in France, right? I mean, uh, okay, economic-wise, it's not perfect, but we have a long history. I think uh, human rights are there and so on. We are open. And to still be at this level, it's not dramatic, but to be honest, a lot remains to be done. And uh, data science, it's a fantastic opportunity for women uh, to, to, to change that drastically in the future. So uh, that was cool to be invited uh, to this presentation and see uh, the huge uh, potential that all those women represent for, for the future. So uh, having said that, uh, now f regarding my talk, what I wanted to, to bring on the table was about um, uh, to, to put all the main foundational story to move into this uh, new digital world. I mean, for industries which have been very conservative for a long time with all legacy uh, aspect in it, uh, moving to this digital world is not trivial. And uh, you have uh, three main components to handle with, which which they have to address a bit differently, which are about the goals. They have to adapt their way to think about what are the new goals now, uh, which is mainly about uh, asset uh, utilization and maximizing the, the, the efficiency, the cost efficiency, the effectiveness, the safety, reliability, and so on. How to integrate all of those uh, technical new stuff. I mean, we are talking about Internet of Things with plenty of new sensors everywhere on the field. Um, HPC, high performance computing for heavy computation, et cetera, et cetera. So that's some big topic, right, to digest for those industrial guys. And the last pillar, which is for me the most crucial one, is about the cultural change. Mm. Because beyond everything, uh, you know, technical stuff, it's a matter of time. It's easy. Uh, but the cultural aspect is really uh, essential. If you don't get the culture right, and to instill some uh, change management, you will likely fail. And uh, successful and valuable transformation uh, comes with organizations that have learned how to involve all of their entities, not just technical, but legal, HR, accounting, yeah. sales, marketing, all together to be aligned and to go to it. That's such a great point. Cultural uh, evolution is critical. It's so hard. Absolutely. Right? You talk about whether it's a big oil company or a big tech company or another company that's large in another industry. Uh, but it's, are you seeing though, I completely agree with you that that cultural change is the essential component. In the oil and gas industry, how have you seen data, data science, drive or influence cultural oh. transformation? For sure, I mean, the data now is in the center of everything. When I said, and you repeat it, uh, data is a new oil, you know, in, until the recent past, um, we were driven by product-centric approach. Today, it's all about services and it's all about data. And that is a different paradigm that we need to integrate in the industry and in the oil and gas that I know better uh, to get the, the best benefit from it. So uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge, but it's a fantastic and um, 
very uh, passionate challenge to, to handle in the, in the future. So and that's why we have opened a center actually here, for example, in the Bay Area, to be close to the heart of um, what is happening in data science. Oh, fantastic. One of the things that you also said in your talk was that transformation through data analytics is equally as relevant on the operational side of a business as it is on the financial side. Expand upon that a little bit. Yeah, actually on the financial side. So the operational uh, exploration production aspect, I think it's uh, more or less understandable. On the financial side, it's a bit more hidden. And um, But for too long, our industry, I mean the oil and gas industry, uh, have been substantially blind uh, by not understanding how to best use their commercial data in a holistic way. And uh, now new startups actually uh, have instilled some new way to think about that, instill uh, um, and develop new products based on machine learning, combining machine learning, financial analysis, uh, etc., etc., together to gain in accuracy to gain in uh, predictability and uh, a key factor is to um, get access to this information in a much, much faster uh, time. And you know in, our, in any industry, but in oil and gas industry, time and precision cost a lot of money. Absolutely. So, What are some of the things that you uh, would recommend to some of the, the young girls that are here, young women that are here in terms of um, being able to influence an industry and, and elicit cultural change from an education perspective? Is it just data science or what are other, some of the other skills and backgrounds you think they need to have to be able to drive such change? Yeah, I think uh, the conference was to, uh, touching this point for since this morning and uh, there is no clear answer, obviously. There is no recipe, but for sure, um, I think many industrial today uh, are still mirrored in their old ways. And uh, they really need some fresh uh, input, some fresh um, insight to really drive the, the culture, right, the strategy, right, uh, that is necessary to, to move on a valuable and uh, successful transformation. And this fresh input, this fresh insight, I think, can be completely an opportunity for women to jump into this, uh, this, um, this jobs or this, uh, this aspect of the story. And uh, with either a technical angle or a managerial angle. I think it can be both, right? And it's not exactly the same soft skills that are behind. So uh, skill-wise, you know, let's be passionate. Uh, if you love the data, if you enjoy playing with the data, uh, I think uh, you, you will be perfect, doesn't matter if you are a man, a uh, woman, I mean, you are just a data scientist at the end, with skills, uh, and, uh, the, and it's all about what you can bring and value to the company that will, um, uh, you will work for. Right. So um, go for it. I mean, uh, data, the data science world is, um, is a, a uh, an oyster, right? For Absolutely. Women, so go for it. Yes. I mean, really, it's a fantastic opportunity. It is. And some of the things that we heard today from a skill perspective is kind of opening it up or maybe broadening it a bit. Absolutely, the core data science skills are, are essential. The, you know, blend of, of hacker, statistician, mathematician, scientist, but also looking at some of the softer skills, um, creativity. Yeah. Communication. Correct. Um, and being able to understand enough of the business Correct. to bring and really marry those two together. Have you seen that trend in kind of um, this ideal background coming up in the oil and gas industry? Yeah, of course. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, you perfectly summarized uh, all the skill set that uh, a good uh, data scientist needs to have. And this, this curiosity for uh, the domain of application. Because data science, either if uh, you can work for a university and then you can approach data science from um, academic and fundamental uh, thinking. But to be honest, most of the time and most of the jobs are uh, using data science for a purpose and for an application. So then you need to adapt yourself and to be sure that you, ha you will have this curiosity, you need to adapt yourself to the knowledge world and not the opposite. So. Um, that this ability of adaptation, of uh, curiosity, of passion for the type of um, problems or uh, challenges, uh, issues that you will have to address through the data science world will be key. And uh, it's really up to everybody to analyze if uh, they want to go for it or not. I think that's a great point that you brought up, that adaptation. And we've actually heard that a number of times today. 
that person needs to have the skills, but also the adaptation, the flexibility. Correct. Along those lines, uh, adaptation maybe, talk to us about <laughs> what your current role is at Agilio Sport. Yeah, so uh, with no real transition, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I moved, I quit Schumberger a few months ago. Uh, my job, I love my job, but uh, you know, I still live in France. It was difficult uh, to be abroad uh, so, so often. Anyway, I decided to change life. But still, I tried to stop working and I almost uh, died. <laughs> so uh, I decided to move forward to another challenge, really. And um, the new challenge is to combine and reconciliate my two passions, which are digital and sports. I love that. Tell me more so about that. So uh, the idea is to um, raise a, a fund, which will be the first uh, independent fund in France, venture capital fund, I mean, uh, addressing the uh, sport and technology uh, vertical. So domain, market, industry. And uh, you know, sport, to make the link with what I expressed today, in fact, sport is uh, almost an industry like any other uh, one. Mm -hmm. uh, and the transformation of sport with the integration of all of these new tech have to be addressed. And everything has to be done. So when you think how to revolutionize the way um, uh, sport is handling, uh, either on the professional side or on the amateur side, you know, and the more I'm digging into this, uh, this new market for me, but um, it's amazing. The, the the opportunities are tremendous. And uh, so we are pretty close to um, close our, our fund and to, be re to get ready to invest in some um, uh, passionating uh, startups uh, and dynamic startups on this topic. Uh, I've just uh, closed some uh, partnership as well with, uh, in LA uh, where Sportech uh, is already booming. So it's, uh, it's going on and uh, it's quite uh, an exciting new uh, different, but uh, challenge that uh, I am taking it right now. It sounds so interesting, and, and wrapping things up, you, you bring up a great point that you've adapted, but you've also been able to, un to recognize the linkage between your favorite passion sports and technology and digital. And these days, especially, you know, we're a bit biased living in Silicon Valley where every company is a tech company, car companies, et cetera. It's a really great message for the younger generation to understand. Follow your passion, and there's technology oh. there, and we're going to need those diverse perspectives to help bring it to life and evolve it. Absolutely. So I think, uh, I realize that it's a luxury uh, at a point to, uh, to have a choice to decide what uh, you like to do in life, but it's also a choice that you have to address when in your early stage, early years, right. and uh, giving you the, the maximum opportunities uh, for the future is important. And then you can have this luxury effectively to decide for your, for your passion and to be driven by your passion. There's the nirvana, exactly. Well, Stephanie, thank you for those wise words of wisdom. Thanks so much for thank stopping by theCUBE today. It's been a pleasure having you on. Me too, thank you. And we were going to be right back. We are live at the Women in Data Science Conference. Stick around, coming right back.